Good morning, friends. How you doing today? I'm I'm Ari. I'm gonna speak to you again. This time I got my baby who got sick. Uh, who has been accompanying me since 2005. The engine they got uh, overheated, and I'm going to change it. The cylinder head gasket. Uh, this is uh, 1994 to shore a Land Cruiser with 4.5 liter engine. I will start it, uh, replace the, the head gasket. Okay, we started. The first thing to do is disconnect the battery. And then we need remove the, the valve covers they got some bolts around using the 10 millimeter socket for remove all the bolts and then we find inside two cam shafts and the change it's important to remove the two cams before take the head bolts okay and the continuous started working, we removed the air mass flow, okay, the air, air mass flow, they got uh, the clamp, okay, for removing this clamp, we use some pick tool, okay, okay, I'll show you the this is the metal clamp um, with a pick tool, yeah, with a pick tool. We pull it, the metal clamp a little bit in both sides, and then we pull it, the, the plug. They got one, the air filter, they got one, one nut. This is, this is handle tight, so we take this bolt. Okay, they got some three clamps, the air filter, they got one hose to goes to the goes to the block and then we got some air hose, two clamps and we pull it and we take the the air mass flow and the air line. Okay. Okay, we continue in this size. Okay, let me see. In the left, in the in the left handle, we got a manifold exhaust. Okay, we take the insulation. Okay, we got two ten millimeters bolts. We take the insulation. Uh, and they got two manifold exhausts with three cylinders in the front and three cylinders in the back. So we take the insulation for both sides. Okay, the thing to do is for remove the the bolts, the manifold exhaust bolts, use just some 14 sockets. But the important thing is remove the stud. Okay, uh, we continue in this size and we remove the manifold exhaust bolt and sometimes the bolt come for the nut together and so say use the socket number 14 
uh, come together. But sometimes in another side like this, the the stud is not come out. It's just a come out the the knot. But for remove the the stud, we use the star socket number six because the stud they got the star head. So exactly exactly fitting one. Star socket number six, and then we remove the stud. Okay, we remove the stud. Do another thing. Okay. Remo remove the the head gas the manifold exhaust gasket. Okay. This is the manifold exhaust gasket. This is the the metal. This we got two manifold exhaust gaskets ready for for. The Another and another thing, we started to remove the throttle body. And this size, we started to connect the accelerator cable and uh, another cable is the cruise control cable, and, and another cable is the transmission cable. So you got three cables, and they got two, no four bolts that use the 12 millimeter sockets for pull it and then underneath the uh, water line so this is what I start to do it now and take it uh, the throttle body The throttle body set has a vacuum line. We start remove it. The another vacuum line come to the the brake booster, and they got TPS plug. Another plug is the EGR. Let's control the minimum. This set set has two bolts in, in the top size. You got one water line underneath. They got two twelve millimeters bolts on the top and two in the bottom. Use the 12 millimeter sockets and extension, we remove the bolt and then we already remove the throttle body. Okay, start to remove the throttle body, but we can pull it complete because they got water line they need yeah the, the thing is yeah they got some water line when it's to be put in the clamp and take off this water water line okay and remove this water line we pull it off the throttle body okay we keep on the place before put it back we clean it and, and the throttle body is off.
they come all the sensors and the year okay Okay, we check off the throttle body. The next step is pull out the spark plug wire. The spark plug, the spark plug wire, they got one set, set has the cover on the top side with Phillips screwdriver with a Phillips screwdriver remove the four bolts two in the front and two in the back yes we got two Phillips bolts on the front and then we pull out this plastic. It's just for cover the, protect the, put the water on the, something for the, for this part of wire. And continue. We remove the the plow wire. This size we take off all distributor distributor cap. Okay, after remove the the plow wire in the right side we got a power steam reservoir and this manifold intake got two parts. They got some up part and lower part. Okay, they is bolted off the up part for four bolts where is underneath. So we need to go underneath the truck for put the long extension for the socket number 12 and take three like A bolts for pull it the up size or up lower manifold intake. They come okay, I think that we close to pull it. The manifold exhaust, the manifold intake, low upper size. We disconnected the EGR valve 
and uh, these bolts are located underneath. We remove it for use the socket number 12. Yeah, we go under the needle drop and use it the Thirty inches extension with a socket number twelve for for take off these bolts. Okay, this is the the long extension we use for remove the the bolt for the manifold intake and use the ratchet too for loose it. Well, yeah, we do this work and it's all ready to pull out the upsize, the manifold intake. Well, I use just one hand, but anyway, it's already okay. Okay, this is the, the manifold intake upper size because they got two parts. The manifold intake is in two parts. You can see much better in this size. You see it? Look at that. And the three holes in the front size, they got two bolts and the three for the rear size. They got two, three, four bolts for each size. So they got eight bolts. And we disconnect the EGR, the throttle bar is off. They got some connectors on the on the size for the okay and the next step is we pull it the gasket. They got two gaskets, the three part for gas, uh, one gasket for three holes. Okay, but still the manifold intake is in there, so, so next time we need to pull it. The fuel reel, the fuel reel is where it's located, the uh, injectors and the line the fuel line goes straight to the fuel reel that's where it needs to be pull it the fuel reel okay we continue now we are going to remove that is spark plug wire. Okay, the distributor rotates counter clove bias. And, and the firing order is one, five, three, six, two, four. To remove them, we have to slide from the right to the left several times in order to remove it. Mm. 
now we are going to remove the distributor cap. The distributor cap has three bolts. We use a flat screwdriver to remove it, all three bolts. We remove the three bolts and remove the cover and also the coil cable that is connected to the cover. Now we can remove it. Distributor cups and cables. Okay, we continue. We got off the distributor cap and cable, and then to remove the distributor, we have to put the rotor in position number one. For this, we are going to remove the rocker cover and turn the crankshaft. To remove the rocker covers needs to be removed 14 bolts with 10 millimeter socket. And use a screwdriver for pick it up a little bit. We lift and to remove it. Here we have the rocker cover outside. The next step is synchronize the engine with cylinder number one on compression and has a mark on the crankshaft. Put on compression for have more access to the crankshaft pulley. We remove the fan and the radiator cover dust. Okay, now 
we are ready to synchronize the engine. Okay, the first thing I did it is put the compression ga gauge on the cylinder number one. Because when you turn the crankshaft until air come out to the compressimeter, that means is the increasing to compression. So at that moment, we put the mark on zero on the crankshaft pulley. Okay, the mark on the crankshaft pulley match with a car case zero. The means is the cylinder number one is a compression and the cylinder number six is an overlap. The distributor rotor must match the one make a mark and a half reference is already synchronized. Crankshaft pull it, distributor, and now the timing change. The timing change in this case has upper point. I put a few zip tar on the change for keep on timing because I don't need to take the whole piece out. They keep in place. Okay, in the size, the motor has the chain tensioner, hydraulic chain tensioner, and we needs to be removed too. For check the synchronize on the cams and the gears on the back side of the gear, the, you see in this orange notch, they got two points, it needs to be uh, stay even. In this point, the two crankshafts was synchronized. In this point, we can start pulling the distributor, the camshafts, and the change I make a little bit too reference mark when I put it back together it's the orange mark on the crown on the cam shop they make it even for the flat size on the head Next step is remove the fuel line. In this case, they got a metal fuel line, is screw it up on the fuel reel. They come from that fuel tank, 
and the fuel filter is underneath the manifold intake. We got to screw it up out. We disconnected the return line to this is screwed up for two bolts in the manifold intake. Okay, we need to unplug the injectors because this engine they got six injectors. Okay, unplug the injectors and take off the fuel reel is fuel reel and injectors. The fuel reel is bolted off for three bolts. The twelve millimeter head socket. We got the manifold intake out. I use the rubber helper for keep up because they got a harder wire on the way, so we can take complete out. Okay. And another thing is I disconnected the the change bolt. I take the change bolt. And the size, the chain tension here. I'm ready for take the cam rockers out. We started loose in the center, goes to outside. It's a uh, bolt that 10 millimeter socket we use it for loose in both sides it's very important when you lose it the cam bolt is started in both sides the center goes to outside slowly because the the valves make a pressure to the to the cams. In this case, we don't need it. Put the marks on the caps because it's already marked. In the exhaust, they got mark E. Shows the exhaust. They got arrow. Show to the front size. And they got number. Starting the front size, number goes to the one, two, three, four, goes to the seven. In both sides, in both sides. Okay, I take off the exhaust cam. I 
I sit on the table. I put the, the cups in order. The reason we need to be take off the cam is the head valve bolts is under the cam shot. If you don't remove the cams, you can lose the head bolts. Okay, now started remove the intake cam. Do the same thing for the cups. It's already marked. Okay. What I wanted to share with you is that I have already removed the bolts from the ball head. I removed the chain, chain hardeners, and already have the ball head outside. In the left side, I disconnected before two lines, the heated lines, water heater, and the front, and the left, and the right size, they got a block for the temperature and the knock sensors. And you see in the picture, we don't need it, take the change and the pull it because they keep on place because the head, they got room for pull it, just the head outside. Okay, what we are going to do now is check the cylinder head gasket I already have outside. Look, what I want to show you is the little hole that you see it is where the compression was passing to the water. Okay, on another hand, I'm going to show you the here the the here the part is the half black on rotated was already passing the compression on the water okay that is that is the reason that we have removed the ball head to change the packing the head you were already blow why the compression was passed to the engine coolant and that was the problem that's happening over here okay we can check the monoblock we also see the black part is there is where the has blow okay what we now have to do is clean the ball head and sealing the head very well with some paper to put a new gasket on the engine. I already buy the gasket I have in there. Look, I'm going to show everything we need to replacement camps in the box. Okay, look, this is the camp the silicone comes to the head gasket comes to the
well, you've seen the head gasket and comes to the the manifold exhaust gasket, the manifold intake gasket that is part of some in the in the rock cover they got some seal to go the oil and there's part plug. They come the manifold intake gasket and they have bulk the bulk cover gasket too. Okay, this is all that said come from to the for the Toyota 1994 Toyota Land Cruiser replacement the head bulk gasket. Okay, the first thing to do is, well, clean the surface of the monoblock and the surface on the, on the head valve with the use of some paper. And then we put the cylinder head gasket for tested on the monoblock make sure everything be fine okay so we already put a small layer of a high strength cooper ceiling of the surface on the cylinder head am I also going to put a little bit lower to high temperature Cooper bow head too and we wait a, a couple minutes before I proceed to the put the bow head. It's very important before you put the high cooper ceiling, clean very well the monoblock surface and put the degreaser and take the grease off. And then we apply a fine coat to cooper ceiling. Uh, in both sides in monoblock sulfides and on head bow sulfides and then we proceed and put the, the head gasket on the monoblock we put another little bit coat over there we wait a couple of minutes before set the hair valves on the engine okay right now is is everything ready to put it back the head valve on the on the engine okay the head valve is set on the monoblock the next thing is put a bolt and start it tighten okay this motor they got specifications for tight the bolts on the head valve is put the first 39 pounds stretch started to the middle size and outside is the first step 39 pounds stretch all the bolts okay this is what I did it right now I'll put it in um, 39 pounds the center goes to outside stretch all the bolts for a 
apply that 39 pounds we use the a tool a torque tool I was trying to show you because after put that 39 pounds we say the specifications turn the bolt 90 degrees plus 90 degrees this is more easy thing for look the bolts turn 90 plus 90 degrees is put a little bit mark on the head bolts okay i think in this case i put a little bit orange point on the bolts okay for c when i turn it 90 degrees the orange point i put in the bolts after turning 90 plus 90 is in another size For tight 90 degrees, and we use the star 12 millimeters socket, the half inch, uh, eight inches the extension, and the pry bar. We don't need to use the top tool, just the pry bar for turner. 90 degrees okay we are ready to turn it 90 degrees okay we show the pry bar the extension and the socket on the bolt and turn it 90 degrees okay 90 well, we do it like that stretch for every bolt on the head 90 uh, after that we turn it another 90 degrees because the specification is 39 bolts plus 90 plus 90 degrees okay you remember the marker put in the bolts okay I show you right now it's in another size an opposite size that means is the bolts on the head is tight okay check okay. it and this time the head valves is set on the monoblock it's tight the next step is put back together the the two cams and I set the timing change and distributor but this time the head is set on the motor we continue before putting the two can shafts on the head we start to grease the contact surface because when the car starts it can work normally the cam shop before the oil arrives at the cam so because when you crank it it take a couple minutes the oil to the old paint goes to the head so this time is very important the cam shop work lubricated for a couple well 30 seconds or a minute no so this is it's important when you 
put the kamsha back, put the, some grease on the on the motor, okay? This is where I will put the, some grease on the head and I put the, some grease on the cam too. On the surface is hole for the rockers and they keep on turning. Okay, we started put the previous lubricated can shop so that they do not have problems at the moment of started. But an important thing when they put the cam shop is necessary to be careful that the axles have some synchronizing points coming on the back. The orange mark has a point to each size the mouse coincide. I put a little bit, bit out the face due to the pressure of the ball springs, but when they rotate it, they can see correctly. The rockers also put in the grease. They are already marked from the one to the seven, and the part in the exhaust has a mark and the part in the arrow that has marked forward. So what I'm going to do now is going to start putting the middle rockers out of the exhaust and the intake rockers, okay? I'm going to proceed always adjusting from to the middle outside. Okay, this time is set the two cams. You see when I turn it, the two points in the back sides they coincide exactly because I put the little bit out the face because the spring balls they tight but when I turn it they coincide exactly. Okay, this time the two cams is set. Okay. The next thing to do is set on timing for put the the change, the timing change gear on the cam. You see at this point? Okay. This point it needs to be coincide exactly for the mark on the gear was on the on the back size. Okay, at this point, we got set the gear, the timing change on the cam, we set all in compressions. You remember the pocket we keep on the change all the time because we put it on some seat tile. Okay, right now the marks on zero, the two cams is set on the point in the back side, some compression. And at this point, we set the timing gear on the cam. Okay, we put a bolt. And this pocket, you see the mark in the back size. They got a one pin needs to be go exactly on the on the pocket. Okay, we started tight. Okay, you see we started tight. Okay, started tight. Okay, and this point gonna be a stretch in the place. Okay, okay. it's on the place right now is ready okay it's set it's set 
the time it change with the comps with the two comps is set okay the next step is set the distributor on time and two okay i will show you later like that but right now it's done okay at this point we started set on the engine the distributor okay the distributor they got a one gear goes to the on the intake and shaft they got another spoket gear okay but before putting in the place we need to be not we need to be put a two notch on on point Okay, let me, let me put a little bit that'll be 40 for put the easy because right now I got some okay let me slide a little bit for okay okay well right now it's a little bit easy to put it in okay and we turn it I was trying to set on place because they got a one orange orange mark here in the distributor and put a set the the rotor. Okay, you see that this notch. Okay, this notch in the aluminum part on the distributor it needs to be stay even for another notch on the gear. Okay, I was trying to put this down. Okay, you see me. Okay. Okay, it's on the plate, but we see she is set the number one. Okay, the rotor. Okay, look, the rotor is not showing the number one. Okay. Okay, we need to be pull it, and we turn it back a little bit, one tooth out. Okay, at this time we put it on one. Exactly in the mark. Okay, and set. Okay, we set again. Okay, look, look the rotor. Look the rotor on this time is exactly even for the mark I put the orange mark I put in the in the distributor it show the the number one. Okay? So the distributor is set on the number one. Okay, the next step we already put it back together the bulk cover. We put a new bulk cover gasket and we put a new bulk cover seal. So this was on the spark plug tubes. Okay. Okay, and we put it in the we set on the on the truck. Okay, we set in the truck. It's a little bit not too bit difficult. We put some grease on the on the tools and the we set. Okay, and we put the bolt back. They got some ten millimeters head socket. And I started tying the, the finger tied because after that we use the the tool. Okay, we tighten. Okay, right now it's set the the bulk cover and put all back together. I put it on the manifold intake and the MAF air sensor. I set everything on the motor. Uh, we started to check it. I put the battery back, connected. I put some oil, some water, and we go test it. Okay, let me see. I'm going to the car. We see. Okay, this little exciting moment for me. Okay, and we open the ignition key. Okay, and we count one, two, three here we go it's cranking okay cool okay the old pressure gauge is going up okay this time we'll show you this uh, a couple of seconds they take the oil goes to the the head okay the 
the all the gauge is good it's charging the the fuel tank is full okay and we see i speed it up a little bit okay i'm be glad my baby back to work again okay okay let me check again okay cool cool everything well fine okay my friend it's just a trash to you this is 1994 Toyota Land Cruiser uh, replace the head ball gasket okay my friends thank you for watching my videos don't forget share this video for your friends and put in the the how I don't remember <laughs> for when I put a new video you can see okay my friends thanks